Hello and welcome to this first uh, Mocha Roto Ink tutorial. Um, my name is Aaron Zander and I'm a uh, a Roto artist. Um, I've been using Mocha for about six months, and uh, I just want to show you guys how to use the basic features. Um, probably gonna follow this up with several other tutorials, but let's get started with just going over the interface. Um, this is what Mocha looks like as a blank slate. Uh, you can see the logo in the background. Uh, up at the top we have all our tools, we have our uh, create a new project, open a project, save the project files, our uh, undo and redo, um, we have our basic tools, over on the far right we have our preview percentage of how far it's rendering a specific frame, um, on the left again we have the layer controls, here will be all of our different rotoing layers, we have our edge properties for setting our feather, um, you might also have your layer properties, which I have in a different place, right here. Uh, your layer properties are your blending mode, your um, in and out points, etc. Try to keep these down here. Um, as you can see, Mocha has a modular interface. You can you know go through and adjust whatever you want, compact it, squish it down, um, get more view of your layer controls. So you don't want your layer controls there at all. You just want it maybe here. Maybe you just want a floating window, size this down, which is really nice. So you can, you know, create multiple windows and uh, really get however much space you need. Drop this back over here. Um, down at the bottom, we have our, uh, you know, main work panels for track, adjust track, the clip, the curve editor, um, all the tools you need to use to really get through what's going on with your track and understand what's going on with your track. Um, here we have our our timeline for our clip. We have our in and out points, uh, ways to set our in and out points. Um, our play, stop, go to next frame, go to next keyframe, etc. Then we have our tracker controls just like in After Effects. Um, you know, track backwards, track forward, stop, track to next frame, track to previous frame. And then we've got our you know, layer properties, which I was talking about before, and our keyframe controls to add key, delete key, copy and paste, delete all, auto key, uber key, keyframe by spline. All these are adjustable. Um, so let's start up by opening uh, a project file that, or a uh, some new footage, and starting a new project for something that we'll be continuing with along the lines for this first integration of Mocha experience. So I'm going to go over to the top left and go create new project. You can also go file new project or Apple N, Command N, so you can see I'm on a Mac so I'll try to be uh, be cautious of that uh, new project and it'll ask you for your clip to import and what you want to name your project, your project output directory and the absolute project uh, path so pop this open and I have something out of my desktop that we're going to be using under Mocha and I'm going to be using this files in reverse. These are some high speed footage that I uh, shot for a spec commercial. So let's name this. Uh, and then let's see. I'll put it in desktop. I'll save it to the desktop. I'll say choose. And as you can see here, it says users are on desktop. And absolute project path tells you exactly where the project will end up. And we'll hit next. So clip to import it tells us where it is, file name. Uh, the length is 421 frames, bit depth 24, it's just a JPEG sequence, so height. Um, you can set, you know, if you imported more than you need, you can set this. Um, so as I went to next, you can see my footage is opened up in the viewer, and you can adjust your uh, color space. Over here we have our frame frame rate, so I'm going to call this 30, this is uh, JPEG sequence, you can make this whatever you feel like. Um, and we can go by frame number, time code number, um, frame offset is 1, so it's going to start at frame 1. Uh, we can, you know, change our gamma to start with, but by default it's 1. And uh, one thing to take note of, this is a, a thing of Mocha, um, is the, the sliders they have are, they might seem a little sluggish at first when you're moving them back and forth. 
But the trick is, you actually rotate. You take your mouse and you spin around them. If you have a middle click, you can use that as well. Um, you can also use your scroll wheel, if you have a scroll wheel. Or you can just type in one. And so, with this all done, I'm now going to uh, say finish. And bam, here we have our project. Um, I'll play this back. So like I said, this is high speed footage. Um, spec Gatorade commercial, we didn't have the budget to make everything you know, as nice as we could. Um, so our goal is going to be first to get some basic red wing done of her face. And uh, maybe we'll do a drop or two. Um, the next tutorial will go into how to really make this pop um, without using a very expensive tool like an Inferno. Uh, which is what they use for the uh, the actual gated commercials. Um, I don't have that kind of money, but I do have enough money for Mocha and uh, Adobe After Effects. So we'll be going through some integration techniques. So if you're using uh, Mocha AE, or even if you're using Motor, this should uh, work for you. So you now see my timeline. There's two red markers at the back and front. These red markers are essentially our in and out or a workspace if you're used to After Effects. Um, you can set these by just dragging them. Um, you can set them manually by entering a frame number, say 50. You can take it and we can go and go, should be set in point. It'll go to wherever your time, uh, time marker is. Or we can go and say set out point and we'll just set our outs right there. Um, you can zoom our timeline in we can zoom it out. Uh, you can use your scroll wheel to go back and forth in the timeline as well as just uh, scrubbing through. So if we zoom in, we have our short section of our clip. But I want to do all of this, so I'm going to go and hit the zoom timeline to full frame range. And I'm just going to drag this back over. So if you've watched the, uh, the promos, on uh, on Imagineer uh, website, you know that Mocha is a 2.5D tracker. What that means is, essentially, um, it's not going to be going looking at pixel per pixel in a small confined space, which you define. It's going to look for the difference. It's going to look at all the pixels in a certain range, and it's going to start roughly analyzing. And so, if it finds that it's very obvious to take the movement, it'll render faster. But if it's finding difficulty, and this this isn't a difficult shot. But it's finding difficulty, it's going to go and start analyzing more and more pixels. And so it, it takes that upon itself to help better your track, which is very nice. So, other things you might notice is this auto key has been turned on. This auto key is much like uh, combustion, uh, where you turn uh, turn keyframing on. Um, and this what this means is every time you make an adjustment, it will automatically create a keyframe. This is good and bad, it's just something you have to remember if you if it won't let you make an adjustment because you already have several keyframes and auto key is turned off um, that's the reason also if you need to make an adjustment at just one point and you want to add a keyframe you can do auto key or you can do add key um, let's start our first roto and the thing the thing to understand with mocha is you don't want to go and say oh i want to just track her eye and you just do one little spawn in many cases, you don't want to do that. You want to say, for here, we're going to be tracking many different aspects of her face. Um, so what we're going to want to do is instead of tracking each one, we're going to want to track her face facial movement because as one object, it's going to move the same no matter if it's up here or down there. Um, so what you do is you track the overall face movement and you set up your your uh, rotospines and to, to parent uh, to be children of your original track. So, what I'm going to do is go up here to this uh, create x spline tool. And with the x spline, all we're going to do is make, to learn how it works, we're just going to make several points. Uh, you click to make new points and you right click to finish. Um, and as you can see, I've got this red circle. It's nicely rounded and each point has these handles. Move these handle, moving farther away sharpens your point and closer um, rounds it off. Now it's not like feathering. Um, what this is saying is these blue lines are the direct path from point to point. This is essentially the outermost bounding box of where you can be. The red line is where your mask actually is. And uh, many people are used to say 
After Effects, um, where it's more of a, a Bezier spline, looks something like that. Um, and you know these are very good, and they're 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 interesting. They're they're nice to use um, for certain things, especially if you need to do something a little uh, just kind of very quickly, and you don't you, you know making paths. They work very well, but a, what a the problem with a Bezier spline, it's very hard, to, it's much harder to do organic movement. Um, you know, if you want to adjust around this, you got to adjust one handle, and then you got to adjust the other handle, and you got to kind of turn it right. Um, you know, you might have to break handles. Um, and it ends up being a lot more trouble than it can be worth. So I'm going to select all these by just holding down, uh, clicking and holding down my mouse and selecting them all. I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard, and bam. So I'm going to go back to my F spline, and when I'm tracking this, the thing I want to do when tracking is, first I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So you go up to your zoom tool, it's the magnifying glass, and you're just going to click and hold, and pull down will zoom out, pull in will zoom up. Um, there's also handy keyboard shortcuts, uh, you know, hold down Z, and you'll get the same option. Say if I'm over my mouse, hold down Z. X will be my hand tool, just like After Effects, um, which is the spacebar in After Effects. Um, so Z zooms in. All right. Now that I've got a little space on the other side, um, the important thing with Mocha is to do loose, loosely track. You don't want to put it spot on the edge, um, because when you do that, you're limiting your overall tracking value. You, you let you want to let Mocha do the hard work for you um, instead of going through and painfully doing each point you know, point by point. You don't need to do that just yet. So I'm going to go create X spline, and I'm going to create my first point off the layer itself. I'm just going to come down and, you know, roughly go through here. Um, come up, and I'm just going to right click to close this. And I'll probably adjust these a little bit. And uh, you know we don't have to worry about making these feathered or you know just kind of just kind of make it barely match the face. You know I probably did too many points, so I'm going to select this layer, this point. You can tell which points are selected because they they become red. Select this point. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm just going to go point, delete points. All right. And you can do that with multiple points or one point. And you know I'll just kind of mess around with this real quick, kind of make it a little nicer. Um, so with this set up, I'm going to uh, go down here to my track controls, and I'm going to look at what we have. Um, there's the trans translation, rotation, scale, shear, and perspective. Um, we don't really have any perspective change. In, in fact, I'll, we could just really just keep these top two if I wanted to. But um, if you have you know movement, your your subject changes your face, you're gonna want to turn the perspective on. Um, I'll just keep it at the default, just these three right now. Um, here you can see the smoothing uh, the minimum pixels used for smoothing um, or uh, for tracking, excuse me. And what this is doing is saying when it's tracking, the minimum amount, the most basic track it's gonna do is gonna use about 30% of these pixels within here. Um, you can set this down. This, the lower this number, the faster your track will be, but the more at risk it will be for a looser track. So I'm just going to keep it at 30. Um, no, it, it'll use more than that if it needs to, but the minimum it will use is 30. Um, so you know, over here in our uh, in our layer controls, you can see we have our layer three. I'm just going to name this. Double click this, and I'll just call this the face track, and I'll hit return. Um, it, we turn our eye on and off, it's visibility. There's this little gear right here will allow us to track or not to track this. And you're thinking, well, why won't why wouldn't I want to track a layer? Well, even if you've parented a layer to another track, um, say I do another mask in here after I've tracked this and I've parented it to it, it'll still track that layer just to make sure that everything's okay. Um, and you really don't actually need that. So I'm going to instead just uh just keep this on for right now. And then we also have our lock. 
options in case we don't want to adjust this anymore, which is, you know, good to do once you've tracked a layer. Uh, prevents you from going through and accidentally adjusting something that you might have had done very well. Um, over here you can see our overlay colors. Uh, they're selected, unselected, and every time you click one of these little boxes, it'll let you set your color. So say I want to do select is actually yellow. It'll change the color of this mask. I'll keep it back to red. Um, so I'm just going to say track forward, and we're going to let this go. So you can see up at the top, this is tracking each frame. It tells you the percentage of the frames. Um, Mocha is very good at taking up your system resources. Um, quit everything. It's it's a very powerful tool. And uh, we'll let this go for a sec.